Hi, this is Bill Hewitt, PowerStrokeHelp.com. Going to have a short discussion here about the cooling systems in the 6.4 liter Power Stroke from 2008 to 2010. There are two primary components to the emissions control systems in the 6.4 liter, and they both produce tremendous amounts of heat that get put into the engine. The EGR system uses a huge cooler that goes down the driver's side of the engine and transfers exhaust heat into the engine coolant. This is important so that the, the exhaust gas that's being introduced to the air intake flow is not hot. Uh, as it needs to be cooled down as, as much as possible so that it doesn't take any more power than it has to away from the operation of the engine. The diesel particulate filtration system is a system of removing soot from the exhaust flow. When the truck goes into regeneration mode, it actually fires fuel on the exhaust stroke of the seven and eight cylinders. The point of this is, is that it puts a tremendous amount of heat into the engine coolant system. The engine actually gets very, very hot during this regeneration process. Because of these two systems, Ford Motor Company has produced a huge cooling system for this truck. But in the 6.4, they use one radiator, one massive radiator, to cool both the engine and the emissions control systems at the same time. This produces some very peculiar problems that occur in the cooling system of this truck. One of the more peculiar problems that we've seen with the 6.4 that's unusual, and I've actually seen this with 7.3 ambulance that idles a lot of, I've also seen it with 6 liter ambulances that idle a lot, but a failure <coughs> of the front cover. One of the things that they had to do to get enough coolant flow in the engine is to put a very large water pump. And at the edges of the water pump where it spins, it goes very fast out there. And what happens is, is the cavitation is so great that it actually breaks down the front cover. It actually takes material away over time from the front cover. Now, it's very hard to see on this particular one, but there's actually a pinhole in the front cover right here on, on the uh, right here in the back here. And I, I actually took a, uh, a staple here, a little piece of wire, and stuck it through because you can see just how small this hole is. And it goes into the back side of the front cover, and you can see it right there coming through. Okay? Very, very small hole. What happens is, is after you have this hole in the front cover, your coolant all goes into your oil. Well, I've seen probably, I don't know, almost two dozen of these trucks come through and without a fault they were all expecting to buy an engine because the Ford dealer said, oh you're going to need an engine, there's a crack in the motor. Of course they were out of warranty and I, I guess they were all just trying to get paid, but, but I mean, it just seems impossible to me that you know, if you're supposed to be a specialist to work on these trucks and the only problem is the front cover and you're selling them a $17,000 motor. Ford gets $17,000 for this motor installed. Every one of these people showed up here expecting to buy a new motor because that's what the dealership had told them. This is a very common problem with these engines. You know, it, it, misleading the customer that way is just not a good way to do business. But in every case, it turned out to just be the front cover. Ford came out with a diesel cooling system additive. This is a stabilizer to keep this cavitation problem from happening. It's actually air bubbles forming uh, in behind the water pump during operation and the air bubbles will continue to grab molecules of, uh, of material off of the cover until you have a hole in it. Also service the cooling system more often. Uh, I recommend doing it every 30,000 miles. Uh, use the factory Ford coolant, it's what's made for your truck. You know there's a bunch of different coolants out there on the market, I don't know anything about them, I can't recommend them. All I can do is recommend the Ford coolant and the cooling system additive. That's the correct stuff for your truck. I have seen some real disasters happen in cooling systems of these trucks when there's contamination between the factory coolant and another coolant. So I can't in good conscience recommend that to you. Uh, if you do the research and you choose to do it for yourself and you flush your system well, well then you know you may have success with that. But I can't recommend any other coolant other than what was designed for the truck with the coolant additive. So you can see how much larger the 6.4 water pump is than the 6 liter water pump. And the rotational speed out here at the edges is much, much greater on the larger impeller than it is on the smaller impeller. That's why this particular cavitation problem is much more acute in the 6.4 engine than it is in the 6 liter engine. One of the other things I highly recommend for the 6.4 is the installation of a coolant filter on this. Coolant filtration, I believe, is crucial to the safe operation of this engine because even if your cavitation is happening on the front cover, where does that material end up? Does it end up in the oil cooler? Does it end up, you know, where? So having coolant filtration 
and is a very good idea on a 6.4. Now, it doesn't sit on top like a 6 liter. It actually goes down behind the fender well and is underneath here. The system actually runs through the fender well and back here by the control arm it's actually by the suspension underneath the frame it's a nice place to mount it underneath here if you're going to plan on keeping your 6.4 i would highly recommend you install a coolant filter one of the areas of upgrade that's going to be available before here for too long is the radiator itself uh, it's kind of tucked in behind the ac and whatnot but you can see the edge of the radiator here one of the shortcomings of the radiator is it does have this, this metal core and plastic tank on the side here, and they're prone to leaking. Anybody who's gone through some of the warranty claims about radiators knows what a hassle this can really be. And it really has boils down to the emissions control systems. Putting so much pressure and heat into the system uh, is causing these to leak at this seam here. Mishimoto has said that they're going to produce an aluminum radiator uh, to replace this with, but even so, the factory radiator, my cost is almost $800 on this darn thing. You know, until there's something available in the aftermarket, we're going to have to stick with the factory one. But I'm really looking forward to the day that we can put a, a full welded aluminum radiator in this truck. So it's our responsibility as, as Power Show gunners to make sure that our truck is taken care of. Coolant filter, coolant additive. At some point, Mishimoto will make us a radiator to, to actually solve the problem. Uh, if you're serious about keeping your truck for a long period of time, uh, uh, way past warranty, I would seriously consider retuning it uh, to help mitigate some of the problems with the emissions control systems. So for now, we got to do what we got to do to keep our trucks running safe and strong for as long as they can. In these tough economic times, we can't afford to throw money away. And it's not like Ford Motor Company is giving away parts or trucks.